Well, all right. Uh, today, I'm going to do some destructive observations of a pair of Future Sonics MG6 and a pair of Ultimate Ears UE5s. Um, over the years, uh, touring with a band for any monitor engineers out there, and um, uh, you know, if you've been touring for a while, you end up with a lot of old in ears. Bands um, either break them or they their ears don't fit anymore over a period of time, or uh, they just start to sound bad. They get stuff in them, and um, you inevitably end up with a box of old, obsolete ears that only fit. The musicians and they don't really need them anymore um, as I have with uh, chili peppers so I dug in I had this old box sitting in uh, work in my uh, work area at rat so I dug through and pulled out a few pairs of ears here's a pair of Anthony's ears uh, the UE5s and I don't know whose these are um, they're not labeled but they're probably um, eh, they kind of look like Anthony's Anthony's or John's. Um, anyways, um, I did a test not long ago, uh, last week, about um, armatures or balanced armatures, um, which have um, a way of making sound where there's actually kind of a U-shaped magnet and a little plate that wiggles and a little pin that goes up, and then it is attached to a diaphragm and that diaphragm wiggles and forces sound out a hole. That's something that I looked up between uh, last week and this week and looked at a bunch of pictures. It was interesting to see. I've only seen them as little metal boxes that you can see through the clear ears. Um, the other type of driver's got a round, like a tiny little speaker. Um, and that's what these other ears are, which are these skin colored ones are Future, the Future Sonics, the armatures are the UE5s. Um, so I was just going to do a couple things. One, um, take a look at uh, the differences, just anything I notice about them. And also, um, then we'll cut them apart. I got some um, little set of tools here and we'll do some damage. All right. So first, we'll look at the Future Sonics um, cable is, you know, I did this other video on cables. This one's got a three wire cable that's hitting a little yoke junction. And then there's four wires coming out, two sets of two, which then come out to the ears themselves. The ears are actually disconnectable, which is great because the cable goes bad. And there's a little um, pair, two gold pins that plug into uh, a, the, the other end of it, the receptacle on the ear. So I'm gonna go ahead and take these cables off if I can, and nice tight fit, which is great. Uh, looking at the UE5s, they actually use what looks to be the same connector. It's uh, the two gold pins hitting the two little um, re receptacles there. I'll pull that off, and we'll take a look at this cable. This cable's got um, two sets of two hitting the junction, and then um, there is the jacketed cable here. And I don't know if this is four wire or um, three wire cable here. But what is interesting, it appears that I can take the Future Sonic cable, I mean the Ultimate Ears cable, will plug into both the Future Sonics and the Ultimate Ears and vice versa. So um, if since the Future Sonics is a three conductor cable and I, I um, showed that there is uh, some limited limitations in the ability to pan hard left and hard right, you could actually, if you like your Future Sonic ears and you want a different cable, I don't know if Future Sonics makes other cables, but you can put ultimate ear cables on them and build a composite up from the two, uh, which is kind of fun. Uh, I'll do a video on how to determine polarity of in-ears when you're just on the fly and you don't have uh, measurement equipment, which is um, fairly easy to do as well. Um, oh, I don't even need to tell, I can do video, I can just tell you. Take um, one ear, a Future Sonics ear, put it into one side, or take the ultimate ear, stick it in the other ear, 
And if they're in polarity, it'll sound like it's in the middle of your head. If they're out of polarity, it'll sound like they're kind of stereo and they'll be hollow in the middle of your head. You can unplug the little connector, plug it in the other way. And when it's in the middle, it's, they're in polarity with each other. And when they're sounding more stereo, one side is out of polarity. Uh, getting a new pair, a pair that hasn't been changed as a reference point, using one from each pair. Um, at the same time, you can put one in here, plug that in to a y, uh, mini plug Y, plug one, put one ear in, and then take a whole bunch of sets and then um, check them all out fairly quickly. All right, so let's get down to it here. I'm going to, here's my um, four ears. I'm going to scrap two of them off to the side. And we'll look at these two. And we'll start with the Future Sonics. So what's the best way to get into something that's fragile and delicate and expensive? A pair of big cutters. Let's see what happens here. Try and do this in front of the... All right, pieces, <laughs> pieces flying everywhere. Um, this has got to be um, traumatizing. These things got to be... A, these are $1,000 new, but... Um, we'll try and break it apart without destroying what's inside. Now this is interesting, it's got a skin colored outside, but the shell in the inside is kind of more rubbery. Um, break this thing apart. Um, that's got to be a... Okay, I'm beginning to see some um, electronics in here. Try not to bump the camera too much. All right, look there, we see a driver. And um, a chamber, you can actually see the driver blows into a chamber and that chamber came up and um, ended up in these two little outlets that I destroyed already because I am doing this in the most finesseful way possible. Finesseful I don't think is a word, but it should be because it's useful. Oh man, we'll chop, chop, chop. Ooh, that's kind of a neat looking little bit in there. It's um, very, um, it looks um, like a high quality headphone bit. Let's see if I can do this. I really don't want to chop my fingers. Um, and I'm trying not to damage. Oh, those work well. Cool, and look at that. There's that little element. We can take this little bit off here. Crunch, crunch, crunch. Um, I would say don't do this at home, but I highly recommend doing this at home, but probably not if you're going to use them again. Um, I'm pretty sure this is going to be the Humpty Dumpty syndrome where we're not going to be able to get this back together again. Although, um, I right, have some thin little wires here that I... All right, cool. Fun stuff there. Oh, look how thin those wires are. Okay, so here's our little speaker. And um, that's a neat looking little thing. It's got a nice little mesh on it. And um, it's a robust looking little driver there. Some little vent holes in the back. Um, good stuff. All right, let's clean up our mess here. A little cleanup time where I will put these down and probably step on them with bare feet because that's what I'm going to do. All right, so now there's our transducer for the Future Sonics, a single, I believe it's a 13 millimeter uh, circular speaker with a magnet and a voice coil. All right, let's see what happens. I like these red ones for getting in there. Let's see what happens with the um, ultimate ears. Right, so I'm looking for where the connector is so I don't chop into the wires too soon. And this is a softer ear. It's an older one. That, no, maybe not. I thought it was a softer ear. Well, that was tough. Boom, we're in. And so I can definitely say that the ultimate ears are easier to get inside. All right, so now the ultimate ears have, look at that, that's a tiny little capacitor. Um, and it's hooked between the two red wires, um, probably something to do with the filtering or the crossover type 
circuit. I don't see any other circuitry in here. So it looks like a high pass filter and it's being used on, I'm trying to see where it attaches to. Oh, this wire's long. Um, it's on the red wire and the red wire goes to both. I can't really see, but I'm guessing that's on the little high frequency driver. Now these are the two armatures here. Uh, probably the bass driver and the treble driver and they're hooked up together and then the output of those two drivers is going into like a flexible tube and that flexible tube I'm going to gently rip it off of the ends here um, and look at that there's actually a little um, device here like a little metal plug and I believe these things I've seen these before uh, where you can actually replace these in some in-ears and it's like to block liquid and moisture and it might be some sort of EQ filter as well. I don't remember. I'll have to look that up or ask somebody or someone will comment with that. But I've seen like a little screw to put those in and out. Um, this one was very deep inside, so um, don't know if this was replaceable. Now these are very old. All right, so now remove the rest of the debris here. And these thin little Litz wires, I, you know, I'm going to leave them. If they're connected still, I might be able to hook into those ears and hear a little sound come out of those tiny little holes. All right, so there's our um, armatures. Now, I did look up and find that there's quite a few armatures available from American and foreign manufacturers of various qualities and types. And, you know, you can actually go out and buy these things and um, maybe even try and make a set yourself. I've been racking my brain for what I could do with these to make tiny little speakers of some use. Um, haven't figured it out yet, um, but in the video where I tried these as a microphone, maybe using these as a mic, a tiny little mic, I wonder what they would sound like. Um, all right, there's a de destructive, very gentle destructive t um, testing, or not testing, uh, observation of what's in there and um, uh, I'll do a video where we fire these little things up and see what they sound like. Awesome. Hope you enjoyed the video and also hey check out soundtools.com a bunch of products I personally design and um, manufacture problem solving stuff for um, pro audio and um, yeah it's, it's fun and it's um, something else I enjoy doing in addition to sharing the knowledge that I wish people had shared with me when I was starting in this industry um, and also rat sales ratsound.com is uh, we have a sales department we sell all kinds of pro audio gear give us a shout um, and uh, we'll give advice we've got an install department as well as a rental department which is, um, you know, the, how I started in this business when I was 17. And, um, you know, that's built up to, we do big festivals like Coachella Festival and Pearl Jam and Jack Johnson, Blink-182 and other major artists, um, as well as smaller stuff. So, yeah, if you need something in pro audio or video lighting or whatever, give us a shout and um, we'll help you out.